So in this problem, we are given a linear charge with the charge density dq dl lambda. And then we have a sphere uh, with a center O at a distance d from the line charge. And the radius of the sphere is equal to r. Now the question is, what is the electric flux through the sphere at two different cases? So the first one is the first one is when the distance d is greater than the radius. Well, if the distance d is greater than the radius, then there is no charge inside the sphere, which means that the net, net electric flux through the sphere, according to the Gauss's law, Q, uh, Q inside over epsilon zero is equal to zero. So when D is greater than R, there is no charge inside and therefore the net flux through the sphere is equal to zero. B. What happens if the D now is less than R? If D is less than R, then there will be some portion of that line which is inside the sphere. Okay? So, uh, to, to visualize this, let's redraw the picture. So now let's say that our line charge is here. So some portion of it is inside the sphere. Okay, so this part of it is inside the sphere. Well now, uh, the net flux through the sphere is not going to be equal to zero, and it will be equal to the amount of charge uh, within the... Uh, it will be related to the amount of charge within the sphere. So now let's draw the picture. So I'm going to draw a two-dimensional picture showing this triangle here. Okay? So this is the circle. This portion is inside the sphere. This is the center. This is equal to R. This is also equal to R. This perpendicular distance to that straight line is equal to D. Okay? So now the question is, what is the length of that whole thing? Let's call it AB. So the length of that a B segment, uh, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So this is hypotenuse, this is one of the sides of the triangle, right triangle, and this one single side is equal to R squared minus D squared, square root. And because we have two of them, that's twice as much. So that is the distance. Uh, well, if we know that it's uniformly charged with a charge density lambda, then the total charge on AB, which is Q inside, will be equal to this times lambda. So 2 lambda R squared minus D squared. And so we can now finally say that the, according to the Gauss's law, the net flux in this case is equal to 2 lambda r square minus d square over epsilon 0. So uh, another thing that you can notice here is that when d is equal to r, this becomes equal to 0. So in other words, uh, we can put here less or equal and here bigger or equal so it matches.